There is no place like it. The Grove on a Saturday afternoon where chandeliers, champagne flutes, and of course bow ties eventually give way to the main attraction, Ole Miss football. Are you ready? These guys are ready. We are ready. Ole Miss take it on Louisiana Monroe, the 91st edition of homecoming here in Oxford, Mississippi. Dave Neal alongside my partner, DJ Shockley, the former Georgia quarterback. And uh, it's kind of good news, bad news. Bad news is Ole Miss wrapping up non-conference play. They are 3-0 to this point. Yeah. Six straight league games coming up. If they want to have some success, what will your eyes be focused on today? It has to go to the offensive side of football. We had a chance to talk to offensive coordinator Phil Longo yesterday, and he's excited about where this offense can be. They can be explosive, but it has to start with this man right here, Jordan Tomu. He is the key to having the balance on this offense, run or pass. He has to get him in and out of good situations for this offense to be explosive today. And we are underway. We'll have to wait to see Jordan Ta'amu as the Warhawks will get the football first. And once again with us down on the sidelines is Dawn Davenport. Let's check in with her right now. Hey, Dawn. Hey, Dave and DJ. I tell you what, this Ole Miss secondary has been decimated by injuries. This was one of the deeper spots on the roster coming into the season, but they've now lost three of their starting defensive backs. Because of that, Matt Luke moved two running backs over to the defensive side of the ball, Junior Armani Linton and true freshman Tylen Knight. Now, Linton played safety for Ole Miss the last two seasons. Talked to him before the game. He told me he really remembered everything but guys he did spend a ton of time in the film room he said he is a hundred percent comfortable and ready to go we could see both of them today we'll keep an eye on that first pass of the game from Louisiana Monroe will be a completion out to 41 a pickup of 16 to RJ Turner the man slinging it around the field today for the Warhawks Caleb Evans boy he is a dangerous guy yeah he comes in here with a Dynamic offense. He can throw it. He can run it. He's their leading rusher. If they're going to have any success today, he has to be the guy that gets it done. Little play action. Lost it up. Nice touch. Big hole in the middle of that defense. And ULM already inside the 30. R.J. Turner again. They'll spot it down around the 28-yard line. That's a 31-yard pickup. Well, you see the aggressive call here early in the ball game. They throw it on both first plays of the game. And you see they're not afraid to throw the football down the field, putting the pressure on his Ole Miss defense already. Another play fake, little sidearm toss, trying to hit the outside. That time he's wrapped up by the Rebels. Marcus Green, their leading receiver, will lose four on the play. Mohamed Sonogo, the first one there for Ole Miss. Well, we're seeing a little three-quarter, a little sidearm, nice touch down the, already from Caleb Evans. And that's one thing, when you watch him on film, he will throw from every arm angle that's known to man. And most quarterbacks who are really good quarterbacks, they find a way to get the football out of their hands. And we've seen on three different plays, he's had a different arm angle to deliver the football. Evans completing passes at around 60% this year. They'll go on the ground. Marcus McCray trying to find some explosiveness in that backfield. McCray usually at a wide receiver lines up in the backfield trying to get some uh, speed on the edge. Ooh, big hit. And a helmet falls off. Obviously McCray having to take a playoff. The physicality of this Ole Miss defense is what they kind of hang their hat on. And this is a big third down play and expect you and to keep the ball in the hands of Caleb Evans and have a chance to throw the football down the field and try to convert here. They'll be shy. They need to get down to the 18 for a first down. That's a pickup of seven. It goes to the tight end, Tyler Lamb. Let's see what Matt Viator wants to do here, the head coach for ULM. Now in his third season, trying to get this team headed in the right direction. They have really struggled on the defensive side of the ball. Their offense last year really got the job done. They just were one of the worst defenses in the country. They'll keep the offense on the field. Here we go. And Ole Miss gets a stop. ULM will turn it over on downs, looking for Josh Peterson. 
I thought it was really tight coverage here. I know ULM was looking for the pass interference, but great job of not panicking. And that's one thing that Weston McGriff talked about was not panicking when you have the opportunity. Javion Hamilton. Well, the unquestioned leader of this team taking the field now, Jordan Tamu. I'm Jordan Tamu, senior quarterback from Pro City Hawaii. Today against ULM, my main focus and goal is to execute every play and be smart with the ball. Well, let's see how that plays out today. Jordan, in his two SEC games, has had a tough time getting untracked, as offense in general has. Last week, of course, losing to LSU, 45 to 16. Tamu in that game, 19 of 38, 50% through the air, 178 yards, no TDs in one pick. Jordan all day to throw. Try to drop one in to the far side. That one is caught by Demarcus Lodge. He'll be spotted down around the 25-yard line. He beats Marcus Hubbard 52 yards. And Dave, the one thing I asked Jordan Tomo in our meeting yesterday was, what is the one thing you want to improve on? And he said it was his deep ball accuracy. And we see early in the game him doing that. Coming near side. D.K. Metcalf pushed out of bounds. And here's the big throw here, throwing it down the sideline. And this is what they call a bottle rocket throw, where just imagine throwing it into a bucket and it falls out of the sky. What a great job of turning that football over and put it on that right outside shoulder where only his guy can make the catch. Tom, a quick hitter, A.J. Brown breaks a tackle inside the five. He'll spin down to around the two-yard line. David Griffith bringing him down, but not before 16 on that pitch and catch. Really important, Ole Miss getting started fast, getting the football into their playmakers' hands in space. Great drive so far. Inside handoff goes to Phillips. Nothing there for Scotty, the team's leading rusher. Just shy of 600 yards on the season. Already six touchdowns for the junior college transfer. Nice job of Colin Turner there for ULM coming in, making that play before Scotty Phillips has a chance to get into the end zone. You have to be aggressive down here if you will in to stop Ole Miss from getting into the zone. They'll go with Phillips again. This time he will stick his nose across the goal line and Ole Miss on the board in a hurry. Number one goal for Ole Miss on his first drive was to be consistent, sustain a drive, but also make good decisions. They did all three on that drive and when that happens, you have six points on the board. Very successful first drive for Ole Miss coming out the gate. Luke Logan to attempt to point after, and he will get the job done. So a seven to nothing lead. It all started with Demarcus Lodge. He doesn't have any touchdown receptions this year, but he does have some of those. Big plays setting up the offense, and Scotty Phillips taking it in. Ole Miss off to a quick start. That is good news for the Rebels and the Rebel fans. They've been a little sluggish on a few occasions. Matt Luke has to be very happy with that. Was very excited about the way his team practiced coming off that tough LSU loss last weekend. So, uh, so far, one drive, he has seen it working pretty well. Matter of fact, that last drive, all your big guns touched the ball. Lodge, Brown, Metcalf, and Phillips. Hey, well, coming up next, number two ranked and undefeated Georgia playing host to Vanderbilt. It's our SEC Saturday night matchup presented by Holiday Inn Express. The game, of course, is streaming live on the ESPN app as well. Georgia trying to keep their winning streak at home alive. They have won nine straight. And during that streak, they've outscored their opponents by almost 30 a game. But Kyle Shermer, an underrated quarterback in this conference, 49 passing touchdowns, second most in Vanderbilt history behind Jay Cutler. You see some of those numbers. Georgia's offense scored over 43 points a game. Does the senior Cal Sherman have something in his back pocket? Going to Athens. That handoff will pick up a couple of yards. By the way, we will, just those of you that are watching, we're watching Missouri, South Carolina. Dari said it a little while ago, but what's going to happen here is when that game resumes, there's just over a minute and a half or some change 
in that game, uh, Missouri with the football. We will bring that to you right here on the SEC Network. This game, during that time, we'll switch over to the SEC alternate channel, and then when Missouri-South Carolina is over, we'll get back here on the main network. So that's the story. So we'll definitely get you back to that South Carolina game when it resumes. Incomplete pass around the 40-yard line looking for Marcus Green. He doesn't drop many. <laughs> you sure about that, Dave? He's one of their top players, and Marcus Green is a guy that's going to get tons of football thrown his, his way today. Actually leads to some belt and touchdowns with four. He's a dynamic receiver that they put him all over the field, and they want to match him up versus anybody. Has the speed, has the athleticism. You won't see many of those happen today out of Marcus Green. Preseason first team all Sun Belt Conference. Also an electrifying return man. So a third down and six here for ULM. Straight four-man rush by Ole Miss. Time to throw, and there was some contact, but no flag. Looking for Zach Jackson. Zedrick Woods back there in coverage. That's a great job with Zedrick Woods. He may have gotten there just a tad bit early just there. Just a tad? Just a tad bit early. But I'm sure Wesley McGriff and his defense will take that right now, getting off the field three and out. Yeah. <laughs> I would say you got away with one there. <laughs> Jared Porter will punt it away. The freshman will punt it away to another freshman. Elijah Moore stands back at the 30 for Ole Miss. High kick toward the sideline. will hit at the 40, and it'll be down at the 39-yard line. A 32-yard punt. Ole Miss, second possession coming up. Their first one was pretty good. SEC Network Football is brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors, the official sports and outdoors retailer of the SEC. It is homecoming here in Oxford. Row packed before the game today. And I tried to get DJ to do that before the game, but he said he didn't stretch. <laughs> True, man. I gotta I gotta stretch. I don't want to tear something. There is the head coach of the ULM Warhawks, Matt Viator, who now in his third season, boy, was so frustrated last week. Just got hammered by Georgia State, and said it was the first time he just it had no explanation for what happened. They had not played that way. There were no practice signs, but they just got walloped uh, against uh, the Panthers of Georgia State on the road, 46 to 14. There's A.J. Brown breaking a couple of tackles. A.J. down to the 30-yard line, a pickup of 26. Jordan Tamu, A.J. Brown picking up where they left off in that first series where Tamu went three for three for 75 yards. Making good decisions right now is what it's all about, and getting the football out of his hands in a timely manner. Tamu. It's Brown again. He is just a catch machine for the Rebels. A.J. now with 37 grabs on the year. And what I love about A.J. is you look at him, he has the deep threat ability. He can stretch the field, but that was a little intermediate route. He found a way to create some space, and he does that often. Got right to the line to gain. A.J. Brown tripped up by Colin Turner. Well, you know, the slot receiver has changed a little bit over oh, the years. I mean, it's yeah. not what it used to be a decade ago. Oh, yeah. And, and when I played, you know, a decade ago, it was little, small, short, yeah. shifty guys. Now you got a, a A.J. Brown in here who's 6'1", 230. Those guys are, <laughs> are different than what I'm used to. Not to mention he can run 4'440s <laughs> yeah. with that size. Ball start, offense, number 87, five-yard penalty, third down. Steve Marlowe, our, our referee, A.J. Brown, All-American, averaging about 90 yards a game receiving, 11th in the FBS with seven receptions a game. Elijah Moore comes in motion, but... Tamu coming near side, flag is down. That is caught, but out of bounds in the secondary from Corey Strauder. It's 
Tamu pulling a Aaron Rodgers impression there, getting ULM to jump and trying to take a shot. Offside, defense, number 90, five-yard penalty, third down. And here's an even better play by Corey Strawder. This is what, what Coach Vietor talked about on our call was they throw a lot of these 50-50 balls. They have to have a chance to be physical at that point of attack, and they did a good job of playing it in the air. On third and short, they will go with Phillips. And he should have enough. I think if he just got it to that 20 yard line or maybe just a shade inside it, that would be enough to move the chains. Scotty Phillips last week, almost 100 yards, has three 100 yard games on the season. Had 96 against the LSU Tigers on 16 carries. Tamu hits Brown, turns it inside, and will strut his stump into the end zone. I'll tell you, Dave, some things you just cannot coach. And you talk about knowing leverage when you catch the football. He does a great job of knowing where the leverage is of the defensive back and just spinning back to the inside and Colin Turner didn't have a chance to make a tackle on that. Just a great job of him understanding what a defensive back is and then making a play on it to get into the zone. You know, the coaches were telling us yesterday how excited they were to get back on the on the game field. They were excited about the way the team had practiced. Jordan Tom, who said the same thing, I guess so. He's 7 of 7 for 130 yards. And A.J. Brown, five catches for 70. I'd say that's pretty impressive stuff. That last drive for A.J. Brown, four catches. And the good news is when a guy works like that, is he got the touchdown. A lot of times, how many times have you seen the guy work hard oh, yeah. and then somebody else gets the touchdown? Oh, yeah. But he's a total team guy. He won't mind that, but I'm sure he minds it even. He loves it even more when he got a chance to make the play and get in the end zone. Kind of be rewarded for doing some great things on that drive. Marcus Green, one of the best in the return game in the country, though, was snuffed down at the 18-yard line. Well, we got a second. Let's get an update from Dari. What's happening, Dari? Mother Nature must have thought we were there. Absolutely. They probably figured we were going there, so right. let's follow those guys. <laughs> We've had two-hour lightning <laughs> delay. We had three hours last week, but not today. Sun is out. It's a warm, warm day here in Oxford, Mississippi. Here's Austin Vaughn taking a little flip pass, and he'll have the first down out over the 32-yard line. Gain of 15. Great first down call here. It's Looks like Ole Miss has a player down. C.J. Miller slow to get up. He was in on that tackle. The sophomore out of Powder Springs. And tell you what, Ole Miss cannot afford any <laughs> more injuries. They've enough. lost three guys. Montrell Custis, Jalen Jones. And uh, it's one of those things where you just, you're having to take guys from the offense Put him on defense midway through a season. Not good. Numbers are starting to get low in the secondary for the Rebels. We'll step aside. Well, C.J. Miller is in the medical tent behind the bench of Ole Miss being attended to after this play. Yeah, it looks like he just gets rolled up. Guys just really hustling to the football and gets his ankle kind of turned on a little bit there. Well, what that means, DJ, is Armani Lenton, the running back, who, as Don told us at the top of our telecast, a former running back, is back playing defense now. And he also just saw Tyler Knight, who last week was in 
running the football for the Rebels. And a big hit, but a catch by Marcus Green right around midfield, a gain of 18. But Kedron Smith, the freshman. And guess who he runs a route off? A Marty Linton. They run double move on him right off the bat, first play in the game. Ooh, could have been a huge collision there. Tyler Knight. Marcus Green making the catch, but a couple of Rebels colliding as that'll be a gain of about eight at the 41-yard line. Caleb Evans just bobbled the football and fell on it, so third down coming up. So there's Tyler Knight. This guy is back there playing their nickel spot, and he's only 5'6". <laughs> 5'6", 171 pounds. But he did play some defensive back in high school. Matter of fact, he played a lot of defensive back. He had 117 tackles as a senior, 122 as a junior. He will get his nose in there. And Coach McGriff is excited about it. He said he's eager to see what he can do. And he said he will stick his face in there despite his size and make some tackles. On third down, big hole. Evans first down and a whole lot more. Inside the 25-yard line. Armani Linton will run him out of bounds, but not before Evans picks up 21 yards. And here's the first time we get the chance to see Evans in open space, use his athleticism to get down the field. They had a lot of stuff happening before the play even started. What a great job and a great call there. Derek Gore. Big hit there as Armani Linton came up, along with Kedron Smith. Derek Gore, you might recognize the name. Derek Gore, the former Alabama transfer, but he was playing behind the likes of Derek Henry, Kenyon Drake, Bo Scarborough, Damian Harris. It's tough to get some, tough to get some uh, run in that backfield. Yeah. <laughs> That'll bring up a third down. No issue with that play there. They tried to get Caleb on the perimeter and give him a run pass option, and nobody was outside, and nobody had a chance to throw the football to you. You see, he only needs 17 yards to reach 5,000 career pass yards. That speaks to the efficiency in which he throws the football, and he's a talented player in his own right. Third and five. Pass is caught, R.J. Turner. Has the first down inside the 10. It'll be first and goal for ULM. This is a great job of getting the football to the perimeter. It's what a team like ULM must do in this ball game because of the speed of Ole Miss, because they want to get upfield and rush. Just throw it outside, let your guys make some plays. You're going to have one-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside. It's a great job of getting the football to the perimeter. Marcus Green right here in the slot. He's a guy that they love to get the football to down here. Not much for Austin Vaughn. It'll be second down and goal for ULM. This is an offense that scored 34 points a game last year. I mean, they were very effective moving the football. The problem was they gave up 41 points a game, one of the worst defenses in the FBS. This year, though, their offense has slowed down a bit. They're averaging just about 21 points a game. For the quarterback draw, Evans. We'll get it inside the five down to about the three yard line. Does the football come out? A lot of folks saying that Ole Miss will have it, and they do. The Rebels come up with the play. Simple QB draw here. Kyle does a great job of pressing the line of scrimmage. You can see right there at the top, it looks like. Oh, it comes out right at the edge as he's sitting on top of another player. Ball look clearly was out. I think Dante Evans came out of there with that football. Yeah, he's sitting on top of Mohamed Sanogo there, and ball comes loose. And we know one thing about this Ole Miss defense is they turn people over. They do a great job of creating turnovers, and now your offense has another possession, and I know Caleb Evans will be highly disappointed. He let the football on the ground, headed in towards the score. 
Here's Phillips. Stiff arm gets to the five and run out of bounds. Wesley Thompson coming up to make the play. When you talk to anybody on his offensive staff, you talk to Coach Luke, when you ask him who's the most consistent guy for this team, Dave, and it's been Scotty Phillips. When things have gone wrong, even if they've had some issues offensively, Scotty Phillips has been the guy for them that's been has done the job for them all year. Quick throw to Brown. He's got some room. A.J. Brown tripped up at the 35. A touchdown saving tackle on the back end from Marcus Hubbard. 31 more yards for A.J. Brown. He's now up over 100 in the first quarter. That's a great job of blocking on the outside as well. And I'll tell you, it's cool. He got a great block on the edge. Cuts it back inside. A.J. down to the 40. David Griffith pulls him uh, down out of bounds. 24 more yards. This is some kind of quarter. Seven catches, 125 yards, and the first quarter is not even over. But give this offense of unit credit for just throwing the ball in space. Guys aren't covered, throw it to them, and they have a chance to. Knocked away at the last moment. DK Metcalf was the intended target. Corey Strauder knocks it to the turf. It's always fun to, to think ahead, look ahead. If A.J. Brown continues on this pass, he'll path he'll have over 500 yards receiving today I think that'll be a day yeah I think a lot of people will have a lot to say about that if it happens Tomu nine out of ten that was his first incomplete pass Jordan will take it down to the 32 yard line got to bring up a third down and a couple Sam Miller the defensive end or, or excuse me the star the nickel bringing him down and there's another example of Jordan doing what he talked about in the open was making sure that he made great decisions. He went through three, four different progressions. Nothing was there. Take the football, get some positive yards. Pass caught by the freshman Elijah Moore. Elijah now with eight catches over 100 yards this season for the freshman. Who's going to replace these guys like A.J. Brown and Demarcus Lodge? We know D.K. Metcalf will be back. Braylon Sanders, another guy that they're really high on. He's averaging uh, 81 yards receiving, or excuse me, 23 and a half yards receiving per catch. You love the patience in with these guys running their routes. You love the patience yeah, he, in, in with the way they're throwing the football as well. I mean, they're playing so much off coverage on the outside. It's pitch and catch, and they make a play with it. Marcus Lodge. It'll be spotted around the eight yard line, but look at the size differential between these receivers and the secondary of ULM. And you got the matchup you want, especially at the top of the screen with Lodge. And that time, it goes to DeMarcus Lodge. There's just, I mean, weapon after weapon. It's a, it's a pick your poison type of offense when you're a defensive coordinator. Is which guy do you double? Which guy do you want to defend? And they have players galore in the backfield and coming out at the receiver position that can hurt you. Little play fake. Damu. He breaks a couple of tackles and will take it into the end zone. It is 20 to nothing, Ole Miss. Just a great look there from this offensive unit. They're coming out looking in three tight end set. Think you're on the one, two yard line. You're going to run the football. They go play action. Jordan Tomlin doesn't like to look. Nobody's open. Going to his front side. He comes back to the left side and makes a guy miss. And it's the athleticism of Jordan Tomlin. All these guys are just, all of them have so much ability. Jordan Ta'amu showing his skill with the feet here. You got to love this out of a guy who's fighting for extra yards and he's trying to make something happen for his offense. Didn't force the football in the play action. It wasn't there. And he has athleticism to be able to make a play on his own and get his 
guys in the end zone for a touchdown. Big drive there. Obviously, A.J. Brown was a huge part of picking up some chunk yardage. But Jordan Tamu finishing it off. To Amu on that drive, six out of seven. Jordan for the day, 13 to 14, 217. It's got to be so much fun to throw to these guys uh, on the outside. I mean, how do you just defend A.J. Brown, Demarcus Lodge, D.K. Metcalf, who I said, you know, he's a redshirt sophomore. I correct myself. There's a great opportunity that he will leave as a three years in this program eligible for the draft. But certainly these guys are just unbelievable. They well, The only way you, you have a chance of covering these type of skilled players is having guys on the other side who are just as skilled or just as physically imposing as these big time receivers. You have defensive backs who can really get in their face and be physical and change up the situation of it. It makes it tough to cover these guys. Luke Logan will kick it away. 118 to play here in the first quarter. Short kick taken at the five by Green. Marcus bouncing off his own man, gets it to the 30, and then a little extra before he's knocked out of bounds. Hey, Monday at 7 o'clock Eastern, it's Thinking Out Loud with our boys Greg McElroy and Marcus Spears. They'll talk football and want your participation via social media throughout the show. It's also available streaming live on the ESPN app. This will be an interesting discussion as we hit the midway point of the season. Those guys uh, certainly will talk at Alabama. But it's the midway point, and my man, Uncle Dave, still has not been on the shelf. I'm not understanding what's happening. Maybe if LSU wins, Marcus Spears may be a little bit more excited to get you on and talk about his Tigers. If you say you're going to talk about his Tigers. I would, talk, I would definitely talk about it. <laughs> Let's get an injury report with Dawn. Hey, Dave, sophomore safety C.J. Miller's injury is a right ankle. They taped it up over his shoe. He tried to do some work here on the sidelines, but honestly, he was struggling to really even jog, headed to the locker room. So sticking with Armani Linton there and uh, talking to him before the game, guys, he feels very comfortable in this defense. Linton is a specimen back there at 6'2", 223, playing the safety spot. Evans, nowhere to go, and... He may have got it right back to the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. And this is something that this defensive front worked hard on this week is how do you rush a guy like Caleb Evans? Do you rush up field? Do you build a picket fence? And I thought the plan today coming in as Coach McGriff, the defensive coordinator, talked about was, hey, we got to build a picket fence around this guy and not allow him to escape outside, but also push from the inside so that this guy doesn't have a lot of room to run if he does decide to take off. Pass caught by R.J. Turner near midfield. He is wrestled to the ground by Jalen Julius, 15-yard pickup. But that will be the final play of the first 15 minutes that belong to Ole Miss. Three touchdowns. They have just torn it up to the tune of 236 total yards. A lot of those go to that guy, A.J. Brown. Twenty-one nothing, Ole Miss out in front. Rebels wrapping up their non-conference play before they hit six straight conference opponents to close out 2018. You look at the first quarter, and you know the Warhawks moved the football. There's no doubt about it, but they kind of stubbed their toe. They had went for it on fourth and down, didn't convert. Fourth down, didn't convert. Then they fumbled the ball yep. inside the 10-yard line. But Ole Miss has certainly made him pay on the other end. And that's the part of the game that they had to come here and they had to be better at was taking care of the football, but really capitalize on the opportunities they have, and Ole Miss has really done it. Well, our headsets are on. Our, they're reviewing something. They want to review if he got the playoff before the quarter ended. Right. Well, uh, uh, and, uh, and most of the time, as a, uh, I remember when we played, we asked the referee, how do you, you know, 
go about that. He says we look at the clock and then we look at the ball. So if he looks at zero, then they snap the football. But it, it, it looks clear from that replay. It was on zero, yeah. That they didn't get snap off. It's clearly here. We got zero. No yeah, ball is no. snapped. Yeah. <laughs> but the problem is now you got to go back and reset everything. Well, that certainly would change this drive. They are going to, on the far side, they're resetting the change as we speak. It was an R.J. Turner 15-yard catch that will be nullified here. After further review, the snap was not completed in time. The quarter expired. Therefore, it will be Louisiana Monroe ball, third down at the 33-yard line. This will be the beginning of the second quarter. Well, there is a look at uh, C.J. Miller, who, as Don told us, has an ankle issue going on. One of the members of that depleted secondary. He's trying to and it's see tough how stable for, that ankle is. It's tough for a defensive back, too, because almost 100% of your game is sticking on that foot and driving forward and using it as momentum to go forward. If you can't push off it, that's going to be tough for a defensive back. And, you can be definitely exposed back there. Well, Dawn was right there next to him. I think she'll probably have a good idea of uh, what's going on. Dawn she, was probably going to get on the bike you, and make yeah, sure I know. All right. she, Yeah, ride the bike with him. <laughs> Nowhere for Evans to go. Armani Linton. A loss of 10 on the play. Well, if that's any gratification for going to the other side, you come in and you're able to get a sack in your first game on the other side of the football, I'm sure that gives him and Coach McGriff a lot of confidence going forward, looking like he's probably going to have to play a lot more than expected coming into this ballgame. You know, the problem was is that they had so much talent, they felt like they were too deep at every spot starting the season. But Linton looks like he might be able to find a home back there. Running catch from Elijah Moore, and he is pushed out of bounds around the 32-yard line after a 47-yard punt. Time to get an update. Let's go to Dari. Thank you, Dari. Kudos to Mr. Tebow. Well deserving for sure. He was well so deserving. much fun, so much fun to watch. Jordan Tom was kind of fun too, uh, especially today. 13 out of 14, 217, a touchdown. Also a couple of runs today. He has had time to throw as guys have had space to work on the outside, and they have made ULM missed a few tackles along the way. Oh, big hole on the right side. Phillips lost the football, but was he down? Did he hit the ground? I said they're going to spot him down around the 46-yard line. That's a 20-yard pickup. And it's just uh, the numbers, First down, Ole Miss. DJ, are, are just staggering. This is a ULM <laughs> defense that's given up 471 yards a game, but 300 yards per game through the air. I mean, Ole Miss not too dissimilar. Yeah, and it's going to be a battle of which team can I give up the big play the longest. And we talked off his coordinator Phil long ago. He and here's a, the last look at the the fumble. It looks it looks like that ball was a little bit loose there, Dave, because it looks like number three comes in there and, and hacks at it. That's Colin Turner had a like he had a, a hack at it there at the end. A little loose. Here's Phillips. 
But Ole Miss ran a play quickly, so cannot go back and look at that. Pick up of six for Phillips. But they've gone back to what Coach Longo, the offensive coordinator, talked about was we had a great week of practice, as you mentioned when we first came on, but we didn't expect to see this great of an output so far early. They've looked really good. He talks about balance, and for him, balance isn't just run, pass numbers. It's about making sure everybody touches the football. They've done a good job of that today. Their big guns have all had an opportunity. The one guy I'm waiting to see touch the football is Dawson Knox, the tight end. They'll go back to Brown. Why not? They can't stop him today. Only three on that catch, but that is number eight for A.J. today. And when you play an explosive offense like Ole Miss is, and you're talking about spreading it around to everybody, ULM is forced to play a lot of zone coverage. So there's going to be a lot of holes in their defense to distribute the football. And right now, they're creating that space. Fourth down, and Ole Miss going to go for it. Tom, a little quarterback run, has plenty of room. Cuts it back to the middle of the field. Trying to reach for the end zone. Touchdown. <laughs> 39 yards, his second of the day. Well, the one moment they play man coverage, and they try to have a spy in the middle of the field. And number four, Rashad Harding, he just does not have enough juice to run with Jordan Tomo in open space and advantage Ole Miss on that big time run from Jordan. Luke Logan getting a pretty good workout here in the first half. So the extra point makes it 28 to nothing. Jordan Tomu having a pretty solid day, 14 of 15 through the air. Now has three rushes for 47 yards and a couple of touchdowns. Pretty good half, 14 of 15, 220, 47 yards on the ground. He has totaled three touchdowns for Jordan Tamu, who was uh, yesterday spending some time with him. Despite the tough losses to Alabama and LSU, you still got to have some fun around the football building. And he is, uh, you know, we talk about the Hawaiian spirit. He certainly embodies that for sure. For more, let's go down to Dawn. Yeah, Dave, how about a glimpse into the relationships he has with his teammates? Check this out. Tom, who Why has a completely good? unique handshake with almost 20 different offensive teammates. Said it started back in the spring. He'd give a handshake to one or two guys, and then teammates would add on to it. They just kept growing. They're not all easy, short handshakes either, by the way. Uh, he told me he's a guy that can easily memorize everything. They have some fun with it. His teammates absolutely love it. That was awesome. I mean, and he didn't miss a beat. Those those weren't like two takes. Those guys would just walk into the indoor <laughs> facility and they'd do the handshake. It was crazy. And the one we didn't see was Don had created one of our own. Well, speaking of that, let's take a look at it. <laughs> <laughs> Is that something? Yeah, that was good. <laughs> as long as we're not any dance moves in there. Oh, yeah. Good. Hey, boys, you will notice my handshake very short and sweet because I cannot remember one any longer than that, much less 20 different handshakes. <laughs> do, do you still remember it now, Dip? No, the I don't. He tried to do it pregame. Don't remember it already. <laughs> well, we, we, it's on tape, so you can go back and review, do your own film study. Evans picks up 18 on the carry. I like Caleb Evans. He's uh, – He's an exceptional athlete back there. He's got big arm, 6'2", 215 pounds. Leads the team in rushing. This time he'll hand it off to Derek Gore. Derek down to the 25-yard line. And one thing that Matt Kubik, the offensive coordinator, talked about with Caleb is as in a game like this, he has to play above and beyond his usual talent and he's played pretty well so far besides the fumble but they have some players that can make some plays on his offense and right now they're actually driving and being really consistent running and throwing 
Last year, Gore had 585 yards rushing and six touchdowns, but only averaged three yards a carry. And he'll get just about that number on that run off the left side. He did carry it 24 times for 108 yards while he was at Alabama. But as we ran through that list of running backs a moment ago, you can see why he felt like he needed to get out of there with Derrick Henry, Kenyon Drake, Bo Scarborough, Damian Harris. Well, wouldn't you, uh, Dave? Yes. <laughs> I would as yeah. well. Ken Webster slow to get up. He's been bothered by a bad hamstring the last few weeks. Well, we've got a break in the action. We'll step aside as well. I know it's first week of October, but it feels like it's maybe the first week of August. What? It is so hot here at Ole Miss, but give the students some credit. Still wearing their blue blazers and red ties on a warm day. 28 to nothing our score. Ben Webster stretching out his hamstring. Hopefully he can get back in for the Rebels. Second down coming up. ULM has had some good drives today, but nothing on the board. Ole Miss will sell out with a blitz. And a nice job there from Tylen Knight, the freshman out of Pearl, Mississippi, bringing down Marcus Green. And you got Tylen Knight and Omarty Linton coming from the inside out to make this play. Two guys coming over from the offensive side of football. And Coach McGriff said, I want to see him stick his head in there. He did a great job of doing it on that particular play. Evans swings it out to Gore. There's a flag down. That may be a late hit. Unnecessary roughness on the quarterback, Caleb Evans. Personal foul, roughing the passer, 46 defense. Half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. Mohamed Sonogo. That'll get you over to the bench. Yeah, he could have easily pulled up there. When you take those two extra steps, nine times out of ten, they're going to get you on those particular calls. And always want to protect the quarterbacks, but that extra little two steps to get you. Those are the things right there that Matt Luke said drives him crazy. Third down, you get the stop. Yep. You're going to force it at least, a, you know, you assume a field goal attempt. But instead, you give him a first down just outside the 10-yard line. And last year, I mean, last week playing against LSU, they had two of those happen on fourth down yeah. when they could have got off the field. You're talking about a team that committed 17 penalties last week, so undisciplined play there. Here's Gore. He will get it into the end zone. So that roughing the passer looms large for Ole Miss as Derek Gore takes it in from 11 yards out. Javion Hamilton, number 21, who actually comes on the blitz on the outside, just overruns it. And it cuts it right back to where he was coming from. And it's a great run and a great drive. Capitalized on the, the penalty from Ole Miss. Craig Ford knocking the extra point through the uprights. Derek Gore, the former Alabama running back, now at ULM. Getting the Warhawks on the board. Derek Gore takes it in from 11 yards out and gets ULM on the board. Nice drive, seven plays, 75 yards, a little over two and a half minutes off the clock. Have certainly helped by Ole Miss and the roughing the passer on a third down. Jacob Meeks will kick it away. Taken at the eight-yard line by Elijah Moore. Elijah breaks a couple of tackles. Nice return out over the 25-yard line. Thursday at 9 o'clock Eastern after Auburn, Texas A&M women's soccer. It's Marty and McGee right here on the SEC Network. You can see them live on the ESPN app as well. Those two guys 
discussing life. <laughs> Amongst other things, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. You, you think that those guys have a bad day? They seem like they have no. such a great time. Speaking of great time, that's what Jordan Damu's done today. 14 out of 15, 220, one touchdown. He'll keep it himself again and trying to split a couple of ULM defenders and he'll take it out to the 39, a gain of 11 and a first down. Cortez Cisco bringing him down. We see that run by Ta'amu. Now remember against Alabama, he got walloped trying to do that same run by a couple of tied defenders. Never was the same in that game after that run. I think he's still trying to find the middle ground of when to slide, when to get his body up. Low throw to A.J. Brown. But the one thing that you see in this ball game is him being more concise with the football. The ball's coming out, or if it's not there, he's taking off using his legs. No negative yardage plays in his ball game so far. He's doing a great job of distributing it, but also just being so concise with it. Dawson Knox stumbles, but a nice move to break free to the 46-yard line. Renaud able to trip him up. Dawson Knox, who when we saw Ole Miss a couple weeks ago, had a big game versus Kent State. He's a, a player that is dynamic in his own right because of his ability to stretch the field. Scotty Phillips running behind that left side of the line. Dawson Knox in there blocking. Jordan Sims also on that left side. Did you speak about Jordan Sims, this offensive line who Coach Luke has been pretty solid, been consistent for him, and the big thing for them is changing the line of scrimmage against his ULM and defense. Ta'amu comes back near side to Marcus Lodge, spins out of trouble inside the 15, down to the 13-yard line. 32 more yards. And the first time we've seen Corey Strauder, number 21, actually play this one not as good as he's played the other ones. You have to do a great job of tackling. You're going to give up some yards, but you got to tackle after they complete the football. And another big game for Ole Miss. Tomu keeping it himself and will be run out of bounds. We'll spot him around the we'll give him seven yard line. Dana five. And Dave, I, I asked Jordan, do you mind being a part of the run game? And he said he loves it. And it's one thing that he is really stressed. We've seen in this ball game is ability to be able to run, but he wants to be a part of the zone read. He wants to be able to tuck it away and, and use his legs more to help his offense. And I thought it was surprising, but we can see that he fits really well in the run game. Quick hitter near side. Lodge was reaching for that goal line, but was just shot. They'll spot him at the one. Off coverage. It's a simple pitch and catch. You got a big physical receiver on the outside. Give him a chance, and everything's clicking on offense for Ole Miss right now. First and goal. Three tied in set for the Rebels. Phillips. He will get it across the goal line for the fourth, or excuse me, the fifth Rebel touchdown of the day. I'm losing count, it's been so many already. <laughs> and this is where Coach Longo draw it up when he talked about being able to come into a ball game and be a balanced offense. You talked about it earlier, Dave. So many guys have touched the football already in this first half. It makes it tough to defend if you're ULM. Phillips with 11 rushes, 45 yards. Brown, eight catches. Lodge, five catches. DK Metcalf with a couple of catches. Thomas just having one of those days, folks. 17 of 19. This one set him up for the touchdown. It is all Ole Miss. Phil Longo, the offensive coordinator, talking to his quarterback, Jordan Ta'amu. Interesting dynamic in this game. Phil Longo certainly has a connection with Mike Collins, the defensive coordinator for ULM. Those two guys were on the same staff at Sam Houston State for a couple of years. They know each other's philosophies quite well. 
thought it was pretty funny. You asked him about it, and he said about watching the film on this ULM. He said, I felt like we were right back at Sam Houston State watching that, that tape of his team this season. That'll be a touchback out to the 25-yard line, Ole Miss. As the team has put together 374 yards of offense. ULM, if you look at the numbers, you'd say pretty good at 189. Problem is, is they have had a couple of miscues that have allowed Ole Miss to stretch this to a 35 to 7 advantage. Evans 11 of 15, 111 yards. Derek Gore will get a couple of yards on the play. Ross Donnelly, the first one there for the Rebels defensively. Ole Miss has just been. I mean, in SEC games, they have just had a tough time slowing down opponents, opponents defensively. They're giving up 38 points a game. 310 yards through the air, 208 on the ground. Big tackle there by Mohamed Sonogo. And Game three. And if you talk about the yards, you talk about what they need to improve on. And I think they've gotten better at getting after the quarterback. They just can't stop them. They've given up too many big plays. They've had the penalties. The things that really set them back defensively and also losing so many guys in the secondary that hurts them on the back end when teams want to throw the football down the field. The communication just hasn't been there, but today they've gotten off to a great start. Boy, look at Marcus Green. He is electrifying, got great speed, gain of 14. What a finish in Columbia. Congrats to South Carolina and what was a monsoon for most of that second half. Get the game-winning field goal, and you just saw Will Muschamp, a happy camper with that victory. Ole Miss here putting on an offensive show, 35-7 against the Warhawks of Louisiana Monroe. Dave Neal, D.J. Shockley, Don Davenport. And there's an exciting player for ULM, Caleb Evans, their quarterback, picks up 15 more yards. And one thing you know watching Caleb through this ball game is a lot of things will not get to him. He's a poised player back there. Even when things were breaking down in the pocket right there, he did a great job of keeping his eye downfield, picking up positive yardage for this offense. Pressure comes from the outside. Good air Shepard with a big hit on Evans. Forced the football onto the turf, but ULM will retain possession. What a hit from Shepard coming off the edge. Yeah, he comes right off that right side. Just swims the right tackle right there and just, just doesn't have a great job. Trace Ellison is the, the left tackle, and Kadir Shepard does a great job of getting to the quarterback and comes over that right side and knocks that football out of the, the hands of Caleb Evans. Just a very dynamic player, Kadir Shepard, who they – Big high hopes for a long and athletic guy, and we saw it right there on that plane. The old blindside hits. You have, oh, you have man. any of those? Huh? Oh, a few. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Taking me back, Dave. <laughs> They'll slip it to the outside. Gillespie with the reception picks up 14, but he will be a yard shy of the line to gain. So third down and about a yard. I don't know if they got it or not. They went with Gore on the handoff left side. They will spot it back at the 31. I think if the ball touches the front end of that 30-yard line, they should have it, but they don't. It looks like number 22, Tinsdale, comes across the backside to deny him for that first down. Big fourth down call here for ULM. And you know Ole Miss is probably going to sell out thinking they're going to run the football. Ole Miss has stopped him once on fourth down this afternoon. Little quarterback sneak. And he should have enough for the first down. A pile of humanity. 
<laughs> I've been on those pals before, Dave. It's not fun either. So Coach Viator knows he's got to keep his offense on the field, gets that fourth down conversion, and sets up first down and 10 from the 30-yard line. Evans, 13 of 17, 139 through the air. Trying to add to that here. Lofts one up. Trying to hit the tight end, Josh Peterson. And if you recognize that name, he would be the son of former ULM quarterback and right now Philadelphia Eagles Super Bowl champion head coach, Doug Peterson. Very, very good player there in, in Peterson, but I thought that throw was on Evans. He should have put that more on the line. Didn't need all the air that he thrown into it. It was man coverage. Had what he wanted. So has to make a better throw. Boy, some miscommunication there, but Evans trying to get him out of trouble. He will pick up four yards on that carry. So something out of nothing. And, boy, another defensive back. Miles Hartsfield limping off the field. It's just been... Boy, one guy after another back there on the back end. Yeah, you just feel bad for defensive coordinator, Coach McGriff, because now it gets to what do you call? You have so many guys out there who are in different spots or haven't played as much. That's a big-time call here on third down. Some pressure comes underneath, incomplete. No flags looking for... Marcus McCray, there's one of those guys, Armani Linton, playing running back just a week ago, now back in the secondary. And that's a, it, it, you know what, I, I look at that play and you can see the blitz happening, you can see him coming with pressure, you have a quick, easy throw, standing there and deliver the football, that's one thing I know Caleb Evans is going to want back, you see defensive coordinator Wesley McGriff there signaling the call to his guys on his big fourth down play. Converted just a moment ago on a fourth down. Evans. Well, that did not go well. Gillespie couldn't hang on to it, and Ole Miss will have the football, giving us an opportunity to get it back to the studio. Dari. Thank you, Dar. We'll see you guys in two minutes and 13 seconds off our game clock on a first down and 10. Here goes Tamu coming near side. Demarcus Lodge makes that catch. You see just how fast they go. You see offensive coordinator Phil Longo, he signaled the calls in, and uh, there's a one play call for everybody on the offense. They see it and they go. That one caught, looked like it could have been picked off. There goes DK Metcalf, still on his feet. Touchdown, Ole Miss. How did he catch that one? Sometimes when the ball is going your way and bouncing your way, things like this happen. It looked like a clear interception was about to happen. But D.K. Metcalf not only comes up with it, but makes something happen after the catch and gets his fifth touchdown on the season. And he gets the N.W.O. belt to go along with it for the nasty wideouts, Dave. These guys have been phenomenal. Brown with eight catches, 128. Lodge now with six catches, 114. To Amu, 19 out of 21, 340, and a couple of touchdowns. As you can see, come on, you got to just uh, come back on the outside and tries to undercut the route, but the defensive back is in his way, and the rest is just big-time player making a big-time play. And we heard Doring talk about he loved what Jordan Tomo doing. That's a receiver talking for you. You can see what's happening out here today. He would love to be a part of this, I'm sure. He was a part of some days like this. <laughs> <laughs> he, 
My man Chris had his moments, that is for <laughs> sure. DK Metcalf. Looked like this should have been picked off right in front of him, but two ULM defenders kind of collided, and there goes Metcalf. And even after the catch, they had chances to make the play. That's the difference between giving up a big play and just giving up a, a smaller big gain, and they're going to make you pay for it, and Phil Longo is loving it right now. His offense is clicking on all cylinders, and lots of smiles and laughter is going on on the sideline when they're clicking like this. Well, the NWO today having some kind of first half. I mean, Tamu could set a school record for yards passing. Has already the third best total in school history when he threw for 448 earlier this year against Southern Illinois. He also went over 400 against Kent State. Has three 400-yard games this year and, or in his career. And that's the reason we came on talking about how explosive his offense can be. And when they're clicking, when they're, each guy is doing their job and making tons of yards out to catch, this is what his offense can look like. One forty-three to go before halftime. And coming up at the break, you can watch the live performance of the Pride of the South on SEC Network Plus. Start streaming now on the ESPN app. Boys and girls, getting ready. Last week at Auburn, we didn't get to see the band at halftime. We did we not. We had some bad weather come through town. No such thing here. I'm sure the band's going to be. High energy here at halftime for sure with the way this game has turned down the first half and where their team has showed up. Five receiver look. Evan spins out of trouble and again creates some offense. Pressure came from Benito Jones. Just couldn't bring him to the turf, but Evans will pick up five. And this is part of the game, especially on offense, where ULM wanted to stay away from, which was the, the five-man protections where you have all five linemen blocking, and uh, they just haven't held up really well to this rush of Ole Miss. But they got to throw the football down the field so there will be more five-man protection calls. They're going to say catch on the far side by R.J. Turner. Right at midfield, a 20-yard pickup. Turner slow to get up over there. It's like he might be cramping up, but that was a heck of a catch in his own right. Yeah, that's a high point ball you like. Look like he's cramping up, and like we mentioned, it is pretty hot down there to be October, but guys are still cramping, and you see him go up, and you talk about defensive backs getting at the highest point. This is going up and reaching for the football and going to get it and being aggressive. Great catch. Pressure comes. Pass a little too high for White to catch. 125 to go before intermission. Ole Miss has scored on every possession there. Six out of six, all touchdowns today. Efficiency at its finest for Ole Miss, and that's kind of what they've been lacking, especially in those big games. Uh, those Alabama LSU, they hurt themselves with a lot of different things, but being efficient is the one thing that they really worked and harped on this week was efficiency and being consistent. Pressure comes. Evans gets the ball away, but a little too high. For Demarcus, uh, Demarius Gillespie, pressure came from Mohamed Sinogo. One thing we haven't mentioned is Kevonte Ruggs, a freshman linebacker. Matt Corral getting loose. Might see him, a very talented freshman quarterback. Only played in one game, but coaches speak very highly of the future of this young man. And Dave, you, we saw him in pregame warm-ups, and you were talking about the arm strength and looking forward to possibly seeing him today, but he has it. Mentioned Ruggs. He got uh, tossed from last week's game for targeting, so not playing here in the first half, but he will be eligible to play when we start the second half. He, Super athletic linebacker, true freshman, Kevonte Ruggs. 42 to 7. I mean, the numbers are just unbelievable. 448. Number of yards for Ole Miss here in the first half. Now 
and even defensively, you got to give Mah you got to give Mississippi a, a lot of credit for what they did in this game. Ole Miss has really done a great job of creating some bad plays for Caleb Evans and this ULM offense. Boy, nice tight spiral on that punt that will hit it to two. That is about as good as you can do it right there. Mac Brown pins Ole Miss back at the two-yard line with 107 to go before halftime. Excuse me, Jared Porter with the punt. That is perfectly placed. Forces Ole Miss to have a long field here. It's going to be a, interesting if they take a chance to go try to go take some out of this first half. Yeah. But you see their drive chart. You talked about it, Dave, having consecutive possessions of going down. And it's big plays of the big plays. Long yardage. You see the only one in short one was two plays, 74 yards. But they've done a great job of forcing this football down the field today. They'll run with it with Isaiah Woolard. The true freshman gets it out over the 10-yard line. And we know about the how good Scotty Phillips has been, but Isaiah Wooler's another guy that's been very good for him in the backfield to spare Scotty Phillips at times. Huge hole. Nice move. Wooler still on his feet, being chased down from behind, and he'll be hit around the 45-yard line. Colin Turner bringing him down, but a huge gain for the freshman of 45 yards. Gaping holes up front. I mean, gaping holes. Watch number nine, Dawson Knox. Get up on that second level, do a great job of turning that linebacker, creating that big hole for Isaiah Willard to run through. Tama will throw. Thought about throwing. Now has some time. He'll get out of bounds with 21 seconds to go. Well, Phil Longo wasn't lying when he said he was excited <laughs> about how things were working out at practice. Felt like they were going to have a huge game. We're not even to halftime yet, and he's telling everybody just kind of slow down a little bit. I mean, he was so passionate about how close he thought this team was to this type of performance. Holding defense number three. 10-yard penalty from the end of the run results in a first down. Well, already for this Phil Longo offense, 502 yards now. 502. Wow. Wow. They are, this is probably the best they have played all year long as far as their execution, as far as everybody being involved in this offense. And Jordan Tomo has had a day for any quarterback to think about. Eric Swinney in the ball game now at running back to the left of Tamu. Jordan coming near side has his man to Marcus Lodge. He's around the 16 yard line. 17 seconds on the clock, 18 more yards. And you can just see how quickly the ball's coming out of his hands. The decisions are happening so much quicker for Tamu. We know exactly where he wants to go to football and delivering strikes every time he let it go. Slam. Is that caught? Dropped around the one yard line. They're going to say incomplete. Looking for DK Metcalf. 11 seconds to go. And if you're going to nitpick anything on that play right there, that ball could have probably been a little bit higher to give DK a chance to catch and run into the end zone. But still a play that maybe DK could have came up with. To the end zone, pass is caught, touchdown. That time, Demarcus Lodge comes up with the football. There is a flag down on the far side of the field around the three-yard line. DK Metcalf over there. E.K. feels like it's more than likely on them.
After the score, dead ball, unsportsmanlike conduct, number three for Ole Miss. That's his first unsportsmanlike conduct of the game. The 15-yard penalty will be enforced on the try. Correction, 14, number 14 for Ole Miss. But the touchdown will count. E.K. with some extracurriculars on the far side, but Lodge gets the touchdown reception. And just giving your guy a chance right here. You've got a big body guy who does a great job with his body control, coming down with that for a touchdown. And you to remember, that drive started on the two-yard line. Long point after NFL type. Yeah. <laughs> Luke Logan knocks it home. But you mentioned it. 98 yards and six plays. 103 off the clock. This is where you love for your receivers. Always working back for you. Defensive back starter Dever looks back, and by the time that happens, Law just hasn't pinned in, and just a great play there. And finishing off this first half, pretty perfect for <laughs> Ole Miss. Uh, it's a video game right now. <laughs> 536 yards of total offense, 374 through the air for Ta'amu, who is 21 out of 24, three touchdowns. You look at the receivers, Lodge with eight, A.J. Brown with eight, D.K. Metcalf with three. He's got 85 yards, 148 for Lodge, 128 for Brown. I mean, it's just been a crazy, crazy first half of football. And Dave Jordan told us, he said, I didn't sleep well after that LSU game. And he probably went right back into the film room and wanted to improve. And they couldn't wait to get back on the field today, and it's definitely shown. That should run out the clock for intermission, and it will. But what a half it was for Ole Miss. Seven possessions, seven touchdowns. 49-7 to seven is our score. We'll see if that's it for Jordan Ta'amu, or will he come back in the third quarter? All these guys <laughs> just put on a show <laughs> offensively. Ole Miss got to feel pretty good about where they are after last week in Baton Rouge. And of course, after this one, it is six straight conference games coming up. So you want to get it right in your final non-conference game. Let's go down to Dawn. Yeah, here with uh, head coach Matt Luke. Coach, you preached consistency all week. Seven for seven, seven touchdowns. I think you got it. What clicked? No, I just, uh, uh, Tomo did a great job managing, making decisions, throwing to the guys that were open. Uh, early on, they had a bunch of guys in the box, and we hit some balls. And then there at the end, we got the run game going a little bit. Will we continue to see Jordan in the second half? Uh, absolutely. Uh, and then you'll see, you know, you have a chance to see Matt Corral, too. So maybe Jason Pellin as well. You lose another defensive back after already losing three starters. Armani Linton steps in. What did you like about what he was able to provide? No, I like the energy. Him and, Tyler, no, him and Tyler Knight both played a bunch of snaps. I saw he got a sack in there. Good to see him have some success. Thank you, Coach. Yeah, thank you. 49-7. to seven. Ole Miss cruising along here on homecoming. Time for us to turn it over to the boys in the studio. Dari. The numbers are off the charts for Ole Miss in the first half. 536 yards of offense. Many of that directed by that guy, Jordan Ta'amu. 374 yards passing in one half of football. Dave Neal, DJ Shockley. Uh, seven possessions, seven touchdowns. I mean, <laughs> almost a perfect, flawless first half. Yeah, and Coach Longo talked about it when we talked to him. He wanted the guys to be efficient. He wanted to be balanced. He wanted to be able to distribute the football all the way around. And they've done that. And I think Jordan's made a great decision with the football every time he's had it. And this is what we expected out of this Ole Miss offense, to be as explosive, to spread it all over the field. And it's been tough for ULM to really uh, keep hold of what they're doing. It is um – you know, if you're an Ole Miss fan, it's excited to see your offense. This is this is what it can look like. You know, there's uh, non-conference games. They've been pretty efficient, starting with Texas Tech. They ran into two of the best defenses in America, in Alabama and LSU. So um, not the kind of offense that certainly they're capable of playing. And if they keep this up, it's got to give you hope 
with six conference games straight ahead of them, no more non-conference competition, that there are some winnable games in there if you can move the football like this. Even if your defense yep. is suspect, you have a shot to outscore people. And even versus the games in Alabama LSU, they felt as though they matched up really well. They felt as though they could compete. They just messed it up as far as some penalties, some mistakes here and there. They're an offense. They're a team that can compete with anybody, I believe, in the country, and they've shown it today in the first half. They're capable. I had a clock issue. Got it fixed, so we are just about ready for some second-half football. And Matt Corral, he looks like he is ready to go. That helmet is buckled up, but we saw Jordan Ta'amu throwing it. He probably doesn't want to give it up, right? He's thinking, <laughs> I got a chance to set some records. It's hard to come off the field when everything's going your way and you're throwing it all over the yard and putting up video game numbers is what he did in the first half. But like you said, Dave, there's a bigger picture in the second half of this season. They got some big games they're going to need him for. Even though this school is not bowl eligible, they certainly would love to say they were. Did he step out of the end zone? He did. Did he step out of the end zone? I think that's going to be his. Oh, that ball. Now, he can step out. The ball has to cross the goal line. It looked like that was very close to him taking the nose of that football across the goal line. Here's one more look at it. Ooh. Did he that call is, fair catch? That is close. Well, that, that official on the left side, I don't know if he can really see the ball of where it was when he came out of the end zone for that half a step. But nonetheless, we get to see Matt Corral. So Jordan Tama will come out and work the first possession of the third quarter. And they'll hand it off. Big hole up the middle. There goes Scotty Phillips down to the 47-yard line. Excuse me, Matt Corral. Corral in at quarterback as he gets the start here in the second half. Quick throw near side hits A.J. Brown. There's that bullet. A.J. continuing to add to his totals. Matt Corral, I mean, you can see the ball jump out of his hand, and you can see why there are a lot of people in this neck of the woods that are really excited about Matt Corral and what he's going to bring to this Ole Miss offense. Just a very quick release. Corral lofting it up. Boy, what a nice throw. Metcalf with the catch. Let's go down to Dawn. Dave talked to Coach Matt Viator, and he said they have got to get some pressure on the Ole Miss quarterback, not Jordan Tomo anymore, but you can still see Ole Miss able to run their offense because there is no pressure. He said if we don't get pressure on their quarterback, this can be another second half like the first. Now, offensively, he said it's a carryover of last week's disappointing game that got to be consistent. It's the first down and 10. Matt Corral will... Loft it up. Here's Phillips. Breaks a tackle. Dives for the end zone. Did he get in? Yes, he did. 11 yards out. Welcome to the game, Matt Corral. Three out of three on his first possession. Only thing changed about that drive was a different number on the back of the quarterback's yep. jersey. They did the exact same thing they were doing in the first half. Making good decisions. Scotty Phillips being really good in space and showing that he can catch the ball at the backfield and make some things happen. Pretty impressive first drive from Matt Corral coming out of halftime. Pretty impressive. Might be an understatement. <laughs> Matt Corral. Scotty Phillips. All these weapons he has to work with. Makes it look simple. At a Long Beach Poly. Swinging it to Phillips. Scotty Phillips, part of this Ole Miss offense that has scored a touchdown on eight straight possessions. Matt Corral having a laugh with his running back. They were, they were so high talking to coaches about Matt Corral. They just smiled at this guy's ability. Marcus Green from the goal line. 
He has hit, stays on his feet after the 22-yard line. Time now to dig in. Brought to you by Coyote. You talk about George Tomo, his ability to create. If things aren't there, you see the athleticism. He's done it a couple times, creating with his legs. And when things aren't there, hey, you call your own number and you can make some plays in space. Jordan Tomo has demonstrated to not just today, but all over the country that he has the right to be able to run the football and be really, really aggressive with it. And he has been a real treat to watch today, not just throwing the football, but using his legs. That athleticism is something he hasn't really used a lot this season, but today he put it on full display. Nowhere to run for Derek Gore. Shepard there to make the tackle. A loss of two. Another tackle behind the line for this defense. That's five of those today with a couple of sacks. Only one missed tackle so far from this defense. And that was an issue against LSU. Uh, Wesley McGriff, I said, how many was? He says, you don't want to know. They'll make it throw up. So yeah. eventually he told us it was 27 missed tackles by their – now, they're, as he says, we're, we're pretty critical when wow. we judge it. I mean, it's remarkable to have 27 missed tackles in a ball game playing against a team like LSU in their building. They have to do a better job of tackling for sure. And I thought they'd done a great job today. They've been pretty steady, only giving up seven points. You got a – very athletic quarterback in the backfield who can who can run and can throw it. And Joe Burrow last week had close to 100 yards rushing. So to be able to hold this offense in check today, I think Coach McGriff would be extremely happy with that outcome. Third down for the Warhawks. Pressure comes. Evans slides away from traffic. Bobbled and caught. Marcus Green with a nice acrobatic catch picks up 15 in a first down. This guy, I was anxious to see him play, and he is not disappointed today, Marcus Green. You see him all over the field. You see him, a type of player who you know Caleb is really excited to throw the football to. He's a guy he looks for, especially when he gets outside the pocket like he did there. Marcus Green coming in here, a, a guy who's from the Mississippi area, tons of family here today. Evans, he's dropped for a loss around the 37, a loss of five on the play. That's Tisdale. That's another tackle behind the line. But you, you mentioned Marcus Green, and he is from Ponce Talk, Mississippi, which is 30, 45 minutes from here. I mean, it is not far at all, so he really is coming home. And he has had a nice afternoon. Not much to talk about for ULM, but Green does have seven catches for 60 yards. And he's a guy who's been – their explosive player. He has seven plays of 20 plus yards this season, so he's the guy they want to get the football to down the field. Trying to slow down that rush by swinging it out to Gore. Ole Miss really swarming to the football. Mohamed Sonogo with another tackle, and that's another one behind the line of scrimmage. And even with the game out of hand right now at 56 to 7, this is a time for. Coach McGriff and his defense to work on some things, to fundamentally get some things down that they need to work on that they struggle with in the first few games. And I'm sure they will be really excited to keep it where it's at now. They only scoring seven points, especially with so many pieces missing, Dave, especially on the back end. Just, they've been decimated, but we finally get to see rugs in the ball game now in this second half. Evans had to get rid of the football in a hurry. That's because Armani Linton I tell you what, you don't want to see him coming downhill, do you? 6'2", 230, safety now. When you say some guy just looked apart, he looks like the prototypical safety back there. We've seen him at the line of scrimmage. We've seen him covering. And you can tell that he is taking going on that side of the football as a challenge and is completely all for it. Fourth down. So a punt by the Warhawks. Back to return it is Elijah Moore. He'll catch it at about the 17 and hit right there. But a flag comes in as well. 49-yard punt. Well, we've seen a couple of good kicks from Jared Porter today. Also an injured ULM player back near the line of scrimmage.
Key looks like he uh, has a left leg issue. He left the game earlier, a little banged up. Back in the first half as well. And both teams want to come out of this game pretty healthy. Uh, we talked about Ole Miss having to play a bulk of conference games coming up. During the return, blocking the bat, receiving team number 23. The penalty will be half the distance to the goal from the end of the return. First down. So Ole Miss leading at 56 to 7 back in a moment. Thank you, Dar. That'll be a lot of fun at Texas A&M. Phil Longo knows about Texas. Coach some at Sam Houston State. Loves his cowboy boots. Offensive coordinator working with a freshman quarterback right now. He throws it up. Corral. Pass is caught by Lodge at the 39-yard line. But as you look at Phil Longo, he gives hand signals. And, DJ, you could explain what he's going through on the sideline and, and what he's trying to do for his freshman quarterback. Yeah, he gives tons of hand signals. And most of the time, everybody skill-wise can see these different hand signals as we see Corral using some of his legs to make. And there he goes down the sideline. That'll be an Ole Miss touchdown of 61 yards. Whatever sign he just gave <laughs> was the one that said, take it to the house. Wow. Well, like you said, Dave, you only needed one signal, and that was go for it. And you can see the nice trot there. He's really excited about that. But a great job of blocking on the outside by the guy he just threw the football to in DeMarcus Lodge. And he pays him back by taking it for the distance. There is Patton Lodge on the helmet. Seven hundred and three yards of offense. Seven oh three for Ole Miss. But the numbers that really matter, 63 on the big board, 63 to 7. You're looking at the future, perhaps, of Ole Miss football in 2019 and beyond. Matt Corral. Phil Longo. Been a good day for him, too. Well, Matt Corral. Part of that 703 yards of offense. He's four out of four, 77 yards through the air. And there's one rush for 61 yards. And as you can see, Ole Miss about to uh, eclipse a school record for total offense. After that touchdown, Marcus McCray will bring it out. And he'll get it to the 25-yard line. And a flag comes in, a couple of flags. Well, our center judge was way back at midfield, and he launched it. Didn't even couldn't even throw it as far as where <laughs> the penalty occurred. During the return, personal foul, face mask, kicking team number 86, 15 yard penalty from the end of the return, first down. So that's why he threw the flag. So that'll back up ULM. Wait. Well, excuse me, we'll give them some decent field position. So that'll push the ball out to the 39-yard line. Josh Johnson in the game at running back for ULM. Nice run to the 45, maybe 46-yard line. 
ULM still has a lot to play for here as they want to work on some things as they get into conference play as well. But Caleb Evans has done a great job in this game of trying to create some things. There's been some tough sledding up front for him, and he's created plays here and there. But up front, they've been beaten, and that's where they've struggled offensively is not been able to block Ole Miss up front. Evans lofts it up, has a man, passes, caught. R.J. Turner inside the 20. And that's the ad lib part of Caleb's game that you like is he's not just looking to run the football when he gets outside the pocket. He keeps his eyes down the field and does a great job of throwing the football down the field to R.J. Turner for a big 37-yard game. First and 10 from the 20. That handoff goes to Johnson. Caleb Evans has now surpassed 5,000 yards. Just one of eight ULM quarterbacks to do so. And they've had some good ones now. You go back to the 80s, started with Bubby Brister, went on to the NFL. Stan Humphreys followed him. And then right after that was Doug Peterson, who went on to have a lengthy NFL career, mainly as a backup through with a few teams, and now a Super Bowl winning coach with the Philadelphia Eagles. And that was a nice little run now for the Warhawks. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's throwing it all over the yard with some pretty, pretty, you say, after quarterbacks throwing the football. And Caleb Elvis now joins that select crew of quarterbacks. So congratulations to you, Caleb. Of course. ULM, formerly known as Northeast Louisiana. Tim McGraw also. Ah. Country singer, ULM. Nice. nice. Grad. Big fan of country music there, Dave. I, I like a little country. I like a little <laughs> bit of everything. I like, I like a little bit of everything. I, I do. Hear. With a twang. I said that, right? <laughs> Here's a toss sweep on third down. See where they spot that football. Well, that's spotted right around the 16 yard line. Give him six. That's McCray scooting to the outside. And I thought this was where ULM started the ball game on the perimeter. Being more aggressive, throwing it on the outside. Knew they had some matchup issues on up front. And now they're starting to do that a little bit more and having a little bit more success. This is possibly where they need to continue this game is on the perimeter instead of try to be inside and play the game. Couple of tight ends on fourth down. Evans hit and dropped. It looked like he ran right into his center, Bobby Reynolds. Don't give the credit to Brendan Williams. A loss of seven, and Ole Miss will have the football. Ten tackles behind the line of scrimmage today for this Ole Miss defense. 63-7 our score. This is the kind of day it's been for ULM. Sixty-three-seven Ole Miss out in front. The nasty wideouts today have been downright nasty. <laughs> You look at some of these numbers, and it, uh, oh, man, what a day for those three guys. Wow. Uh, that's that's pretty, pretty doing impressive right there. Eric Swinney on the carry, picks up one. Matt Corrales had a chance at least for one possession, or two possessions, I should say, to throw to those guys. And, and there were a couple big plays throughout that, but a lot of it was five, ten yard routes and those guys making plays with it. They're explosive in their own right and they have a, a really, really good ability to be able to go down the field and make some plays after the catch as well. I mean, they're a unit that when you come into a ball game, a defensive coordinator says, number one, we got to stop the deep ball. And those three guys put a lot of pressure on defensive coordinators and defensive backs to be on their game every single play because they have the chance to take it to the house as we've seen today anytime they touch the football. High throw. Okay. 
That'll bring up a fourth down. So for the first time today, we get to see Mac Brown. And what, and what does he do? He punts. Oh, he punts. Oh. I was unsure. Punter. Didn't know if we'd see him today. Averaging 40 yards per kick at a career long 63 yarder against LSU last week. Line drive kick. Very returnable for Marcus Green, who had four return kicks a year ago. Tied for first in the country. Can he have one here in 2018? Yes, he will. 70 yards. We talked about Marcus Green earlier. We talked about how explosive he can be. We talked about what he brings to this team. And you just, it was set up pretty well. But Ole Miss on this left side, they have one guy on the left side at hash. And that's just not going to get it. And Marcus Green versus the kicker. Nine times out of ten, he's going to win that. And he won it today. Big return by Marcus Green. Coming back home, he'll have something to be excited about today off that big punt return for a touchdown. So Ford's point after is up and good. Marcus Green, some kind of player himself. We talk about these Ole Miss receivers, but that guy can flat out play. Let's go down to Dawn. Dave, DJ, I bet that was pretty special for him. He grew up coming to the stadium to watch games, grew up about 20 minutes from here, told me that his ticket list this morning hit 83 people. He mm. was expecting about 200 total to come to the game. He had started asking his teammates this summer to keep him in mind if they weren't using their ticket allotment uh, and then sent out a group text to the entire team about a week ago just to remind them. So he's really excited to be so close to home. Told me he even knows a couple of the security guards here at the stadium. Like this is really a homecoming for him as well. Well, he'll always have that highlight. 70 yard punt return for a touchdown. It's almost like Ole Miss forgot how to cover a punt. It's been so long, right? <laughs> oh, man. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of guys that's going to be reprimanded for that yeah. tomorrow when they watch the film. So Jacob Meeks will kick it away for the Warhawks. Elijah Moore back to return. Takes a knee. Coming up next, undefeated in second ranked Georgia, will host Vanderbilt in our SEC Saturday night matchup presented by Holiday Inn Express. Of course, that game also streaming on the ESPN app. Last time Vanderbilt went to Athens, they shot the Bulldogs, Kirby Smart's first season. Two good ones. Jake Fromm completing over 72% of his passes. Mm. That's getting it done there. Uh, you know that Jake Fromm's been a big part of it, but Justin Fields has come on and been a huge part of the offense as well. But does Kyle Sherman have one more big-time game in his back pocket for his Vanderbilt Commodores? Corral, nowhere to go, and he gets down on the turf. Matt Corral has a 61-yard touchdown run already. Just his second game of the season and of course Matt Luke was one of those guys who said you know we're not just going to put him in a game to hand off we want him to have some meaningful snaps uh, of course now in college football you have four games before you lose a red shirt uh, so he has plenty of opportunities down the road to get some more action this is just game number two but this guy was a top 100 recruit recruit he enrolled early was a US Army All-American Threw for over 11,000 yards and 123 touchdowns in high school at a powerhouse, Long Beach Poly. You can see why they're excited about him. You saw that first drive coming out of halftime. You see he has the quick release. He has the athleticism to, to get outside the pocket and make some plays, and he plays with some, some swagger and about him. So he's going to be somebody they're going to be excited about the next few years here in Oxford with the style of play that he brings to this offense. and. It's going to be fun to watch. 
talking to a few folks around the football offices yesterday. One of the things that came up, one of the great attributes of Chad Kelly was his confidence. He always right. believed that they were going to score every drive. And they say that he's got a little bit of that in him, too, a little bit of Chad Kelly and the confidence. Elijah Moore picking up 13 yards. And you can just see some of that confidence. You can see just the fundamental part of the game that he has moving a little bit side to side in the pocket not trying to run out or move too fast finding a little crease and lane to throw to and then delivering a strike that's what you're talking about just moving inside the pocket he does a great job of that on that particular play and then finishing it off with a completion so first down and 10 for the rebels Get it out to Swinney, who will try to make a couple of guys miss. Not a lot happening there, just a yard, and the shot Harding bringing him down. Swinney's a guy they're glad to have back. You know, he had mono a few weeks back, and he just lost a lot of weight, a lot of his endurance. Took him a while to get back in football straight, get his strength back. But that allows a guy like Armani Linton to go play defense now that you've got a Swinney who can be your third running back. Yeah, and we saw Isaiah Wooler earlier. We know what Scotty Phillips brings. Now you're bringing a, a guy like Eric Sweeney who's similar to Scotty Phillips in the way he runs. And that's why, like you said, they, they were able to take Tyler Knight and Amarni Linton and Linton and take him over to the defensive side when you need that type of help. Oh, Sweeney is tossed to the turf by Darian Ford. So now it'll be third down and about 13 yards. And Dave, here's the situation right here on third and long where you get a chance to see Matt Corral. You get to see what he's about. And the situational part of the game, does he force the ball? Does he try to make something happen because he wants to continue to drive and stay on the field? Here's the decision-making process that you want to see out of Matt Corral in a critical moment in the game right now. You saw some of those signs we were talking about earlier. Only one of those signs means Matter. anything. <laughs> the other ones are just fakes to kind of bluff, and you don't know if it's the first one or the third one uh, if you're trying to scout them. But another one that uh, works for a first down. But, but now remember, there's, his signs are really simple. It's only a one movement, yeah. and the other ones are fake. And so the, the players don't know what – the fake one. So when they see it, it's not like, what did he just signal? They only know the one specific thing in there. And I remember when we were in college, we went through tons of signals from hand signals to gestures to all type of things that mean so many things for all the skilled guys. And one thing means something else for the linemen. And they go through this every single play. And you have to be focused long enough to see which signal it is that's actually the hot signal. Let's see what Coach Longo dials up here on the first and ten. Straight handoff goes to Eric Swinney. No gain on the play, and see if that's not the final play of the third quarter. Ole Miss. 734 yards of offense. The school record is 751. Scotty Phillips, the rest of this offense, enjoying an afternoon here at homecoming. 15 more minutes to go. It's been all Ole Miss. Church, new single desperate man. Nothing desperate about this old Miss offense today. They are about to set a school record. They may do it right here. Corral keeps it himself. He'll have a first down at the 39. That's 11 yards. So not quite there yet. But you look at our game summary. Um, nine straight possessions, nine straight touchdowns. They had to punt on their last possession. But other than that, it's been a pretty flawless afternoon offensively. 
exactly what Coach Longo dialed up. He, he was really excited when we talked about that earlier. And this offense is definitely not disappointed today. And all the weapons they have all around the field, and we're seeing some of the second teamers now, and excitement for this guy, Mr. Matt Corral, is definitely going to boost the confidence of everybody going forward. Corral will keep it. Trying to turn the corner, and he'll get a couple of yards out of that when it's all said and done. But you see, obviously, Matt Corral runs more than Jordan Tamu. I mean, he is certainly looking to pick up some yards. Jordan's looking to sling it. Yeah. And, and we've seen Corral sling it around, too, and that's what's going to make him just as dangerous is now he's going to bring that extra dimension of any given time he can take off and go 60, 70 yards like we saw in that third quarter. He has that type of ability with his arm and his legs. Second down coming up. They need five yards for a new Ole Miss record. They've been playing football here for about 124 years. They'll swing it to the outside. Miles Battle will have the yardage needed. First down for Ole Miss. It's kind of been what this offense has been about today is find the open receiver. You got off coverage. Take the simple and easy throw. As you can see, they get to the new record here for Ole Miss. Uh, it's tons of yards being chalked up today, and both quarterbacks have done a great job of just being efficient with the football and not turning it over. Ole Miss just letting this clock run and run. Quick slant passes caught, and this could be another touchdown. There goes Elijah Moore. Touchdown Ole Miss. That was 24 yards. We got a nice block on the outside from Alex Weber. And again, another simple, easy throw. Nothing really to it. You find the open guy. He's a five-yard hitch route, and Elijah Moore does the rest with his athleticism and like you mentioned, Alex Weber on the outside blocking fellow receiver. That is up and through the goal post for Luke Logan. Ten touchdowns today. This is number ten. Freshman to freshman. Get used to that. Some great games going around the conference this afternoon. I wouldn't necessarily say this is a great game. 70 to 14. <laughs> I wouldn't put it in that category. Hey, we'll be back in 10 seconds after this message from Academy Sports and Outdoors. Want to give them a try? Yeah. She might be, uh, her quicks are getting so much better, she might be able to play wide receiver for this Ole Miss team by the end of the year. She might have 100 yards, too, every time she touches the football. All smiles on that Ole Miss sideline. Of course, they will get ready. Remember, six straight conference games coming up. Starts next week at Arkansas. Then they host Auburn, South Carolina, A&M, Vandy, Mississippi State. Colby Suits getting some work at quarterback. A 6'3", 233-pound freshman out of Fournay, Texas. Getting some work today. He's a guy they're really high on. Evans gave it his best shot today, but just didn't get a whole lot of help. Josh Johnson. Colby Suits, yeah, Colby Suits. 
showing you a little bit about what they're excited about. They think he's a guy that certainly is their guy down the road. They like everything about him, his size, his ability to run. He's that dual threat guy that Coach Viator really loves. And like you mentioned, 233 pounds. You know he can handle the pounding of taking some hits here and there when he's running. Nice throw. Hits this mark. That pass is caught by Carter down around the eight-yard line, a 39-yard pickup. And you're talking about dropping it in the bucket right there. What a perfect throw, Kobe, coming in. And he said, yeah, Jordan Tamu and Matt Corral, I could throw it as well. Let me join in and drops it down to Carter on a nice deep ball. Going toward the end zone, and this one looking for Zach Jackson. Love the aggressive play calling, but also I love what Colby's putting the football. He's giving his guys a chance to make a play on it, and I thought Zachary Jackson had a great chance of catching that football before Ole Miss's defender actually turned his head around. Ball's in a good spot. Got to come down with that one. Johnson with the run to the 15-yard line. ULM today is closing in on 400 yards of offense. Only one offensive touchdown. The other came on a punt return from Marcus Green, 70 yards. And similar to what we saw at Matt Corral with a big third down conversion he had when he came in the ball game. Another one here for Colby inside the red zone. Has to make a good decision here. Got points on the board, but will he make a good decision to convert this third down? Bringing some heat. Lost the football. It's on the turf. Can Ole Miss scoop it up? They do. It's at the 45-yard line. Cavante Ruggs, who had to sit in the first half because of a targeting call last week, comes up with the fumble recovery. So Ole Miss... Comes up with the scoop on a third down sack. Total offensive record today for Ole Miss. You can also chalk up a single game record for the pass attack today. 517 yards through the air today for this Ole Miss team. And when you start thinking about Matt Corral, 10 of 10, 143, couple of TDs off the bench. He's back on the field after the fumble recovery by Cavante Ruggs. Eric Swinney on that carry, gain of eight. Boy, ULM the last two weeks, you know, they, they fell behind Detroit and ended up losing 35-27. But they fell behind 28-0, had to really make a rally to make that close. Had a chance late, but then last week they didn't even have much of a chance. Georgia State just from the opening kick really gave it to them. And that man, Coach Viator, said to us this week, it's just like he doesn't have any explanation from where that came from. Yeah. It was just not how they've played or practiced. And uh, something's going on over there because they just have uh, – they just weren't in it from the opening kick today. Flag comes in. But you know there will be some meaningful discussions back in Monroe, Louisiana, <laughs> when they get home about who's with us. Okay. Holding offense, number 61, 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Second down. Ole Miss getting anybody that pr pretty much has a jersey on, getting some action. <laughs> Go down there, DJ, see if you can get a jersey. <laughs> There's Swinney on the run. He'll pick up four. Of course, they start off Ole Miss with the two heavyweights at this point in the league. Uh, uh, actually, two of the three, I should say, Alabama and on the road at LSU. 
not exactly the way to get your footing yeah. through a conference run, but nonetheless, they've gotten that behind them. And they, and you know, you look at that schedule and you say, if you play a little bit of defense, you might have a shot at six wins. And here's the thing: you play Alabama, you play LSU, you kind of figure out who the guys on your team you can depend on, who's going to show up in those big moments, and you get to the stretch run of your season and know who those particular players are. Matt Corral picking up a couple yards close to a first down. Looks like he may have got it. Boy, Cortez Cisco holding on for the initial hit. Big but look, collision, but a but look at Corral. first that's, down. That's what I'm talking about there. He takes a huge hit, gets slung around, picks up a first down here. Not looking to slide, but trying to get there and takes a knock right there at the end. But he gets up laughing and joking, and you can see the confidence is not lacking from Matt Corral when he's on the football field. Offense just went over 800 yards. 804 now for Ole Miss. Look, you know, I think sometimes people get so close to the fire, meaning Ole Miss fans, that they forget that this team is having to deal with some NCAA sanctions and, and the cloud that's been over this program back-to-back -back years with bowl ban. You know, it, from an outsider's perspective, the fact that they were able to do what they did last year. Yeah. Uh, obviously got Matt Luke the job, but with an opportunity to win six or seven games again if things kind of fall the right way for them. I mean, obviously that's yet to be determined, but if you do get to that six-win, seven-win season, I think that that's, that's saying something. And yeah. I know you got some talent out here, but regardless, there's, you know, there's a cloud over this program. Absolutely, and when things happen to 18- to 22-year-olds and – you look at the dynamic of what it means to their future and for guys not to just kind of tap out it means a lot and these guys continue to fight they have some pride about themselves and they want to finish their careers they want to finish a season off on a high note and I remember when I was in this situation not in this particular situation but when you had some things go wrong you wanted to play really well for that senior class and there are a lot of seniors on this football team like a Jordan Tamu who you want to send out and, and, and send them out on a high note. And saying that, hey, we were bowl eligible, it will be big for those guys down the road. Third down for Ole Miss. Clock at 6.20. Corral will keep it. Not afraid of contact. You know, we're talking about Chad Kelly. There's another guy. The comparison, Chad Kelly was never afraid yeah. of either taking a hit or delivering a hit. And in some ways it's good because your teammates feed off it. They, they know you're not afraid to stick your head in there. And I don't know where this comes from, but they think quarterbacks don't allow, don't like, don't like contact. I don't know where people think yeah, about I, stuff like that. I mean, I don't know. quarterbacks are like the toughest guys out here. <laughs> I'm going to agree with you because you're here, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> they, I'm telling you, we, we don't mind it. We just don't like the ones where you can't see the guy that's right. hitting <laughs> Mac Brown punted away. Fair catch call fourth, 13-yard line. Ole Miss all smiles. One of the great interesting stories here at Ole Miss is a guy named Benito Jones. He loves his farm. We'll have his story when we come back. Take this little home. Big Benito Jones out of Waynesboro, Mississippi, a starter on that D-line. He loves his football, but you know what? He loves his farm even more. I think it was in the weight room during off-season lifts, and he was just like, man, y'all got to invest in some cattle or something. I was like, dude, what? Oh, yeah. It's just a call. My daddy used to call him. And then they'll come, just like that. They just a little hungry. I mean, I was born to being like a country guy. And I mean, I gotta do this the rest of my life. He loves his cattle. Dave, I hear you have a really good call there. Incomplete, but I heard you do it earlier. Let me take. 
I, I'm not going to call it. You can call the cows if you want. <laughs> I Dave shut that down uh, quick. Yeah. But it, it, he literally was talking to the cows. He was, and they literally came with no problem. Let's hear you. Let's you call okay. the cows. All right, here we go. Ooh. You hear him coming? You yeah. see him coming? Ooh. I see him coming. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm pretty close there. That's Benito. I'm giving you a run for your money up here. Cow calling. He's out of the same hotel, uh, hometown as former defensive lineman and NFL player Jarrell Poe, played here at Ole Miss, who has been kind of a mentor to Benito Jones. Let's go down to Dawn. Hey, guys, I, I'm not going to call the cows, but I will tell you that he does utilize some of his scholarship money to purchase livestock for the farm as well. I mean, the, the guy is nuts. That's I mean, a he guy is that's a, all in on, on yeah, his cattle. He is a country boy through and through. I wanted to, when I was in college and I had extra money, I wanted to go get something to eat or buy a new pair of shoes. <laughs> My man Benito <laughs> is getting cattle. He's getting livestock. <laughs> right. <laughs> Broken tackle there. That'll get Colby Suits out of bounds with 444 to play in this one, a gain of 12. But Benito is one of those guys, though, that coaches tell you that he has got unbelievable talent. Right? I mean, great first step. Um, Melissa McGriff says it might be the best first step. He's coached. Uh, but it's just the consistency yeah. isn't there. Yeah. And it, he's a guy that he said has been the guy who gets tons of rush. He doesn't want to take away from his aggressiveness up front. But he just sometimes gets out of the position at times because he's so aggressive. But like you mentioned, one of the quickest first steps he's ever seen. And he, say, he sits down with him and says, hey, I don't want to take anything away from you. But you got to make sure you're on your right paths when you're rushing and, and going against these different defensive linemen or offensive linemen, excuse me. I forgot to ask Wesley. I should have asked him in our conversations yesterday if he's ever been out to the farm. <laughs> he calls Coach the McGriff, Coach McGriff was probably somewhere working out. Yeah, there. he got a couple workouts yeah. in yesterday, he said. We, we saw him earlier in the day, and it was probably his third workout already. You ever seen Coach McGriff? He, he fills out his shirt with no problem. There's Benito. He'll probably get some dinner and head out to the farm, huh, man? Yeah. He's looking at the clock like, I got to go feed the cows. And there's Coach McGriff. And like I said, look, look at the guns on that guy. That one is dropped around the 15-yard line. Looking for Josh Peterson and Wesley McGriff fired up about it. Look, he hadn't been – there hadn't been many opportunities for him to smile. True, true. But he can – I think he can He can take a lot from this ball game to be excited about, especially with – we talked about all the things that happened on the back end. But he has gotten the group ready that's planned, and he talks about bringing the energy and the juice every single day regardless of who's out there and – this defense has only given up seven points today. Pass is caught by Rodrigue. Gain of nine. He'll be a little bit shy of the first down. 315 and counting. I wonder what a game like this will do for you. It's, it's, you know, next week you got an opportunity on the road at, at Arkansas who just, you know, are, Arkansas gave up a ton of points, too. I yep. mean, their defense certainly struggling. 65 points, I believe, was today. But they scored 31. And okay. Uh, let's face it. How many teams have done that to Alabama? And they did a good job of moving the football as well. And, and they had a point in that ball game where it was 21-7, to 7 and they were going in to, to score. And Ty Story fumbles right there on the one-yard line. It's 21-14. to 14. You got a ball game. But I just think the confidence offensively from Arkansas for scoring 31 will, Absolutely. will give you a little boost. Something to hang your hat on, but um, it's certainly a winnable game for Ole Miss. Yep. But they have to put together the performance they put together today. Yeah. Uh, you can't have the, the two where you win conference and things didn't go right for you. Suits. He'll have the first down. On a fourth down at about six, he picks up seven. So Ole Miss is going to sweep through their non-conference slate. This is a team that started with Texas Tech 
in Houston. They win that by 20. Then they had a shootout with Southern Illinois. They win 76-41. And they beat Kent State 38-17 a couple of weeks ago. Jackson with the reception. But from here on out, it's all business. Rough in the passer defense, number 44. Half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. Well, that is no bueno. <laughs> yeah. And they, I think you bring up a good point about how you can carry this over into the next game. And you think about playing a conference game and you put up the type of numbers you did on both sides of the football. And the big word we heard all week and when we talked to Coach Luke and both coordinators was we want to be more consistent. And you put it together today, can you do it again next week and show even more consistency throughout this program from one week to the next? Suits to the end zone, touchdown. Zach Jackson. The red shirt freshman out of Grand Prairie, Texas. A nine yard pitch and catch. Hey, what, Colby Suits looks pretty good back there. Looks comfortable. Yeah, this looks similar to the throw he had when he first came into the ball game. Two quarters with Jackson as well. And he's been guarded by the freshman Keydron Smith. It's a great job of throwing a back shoulder throw away from the defensive back. Point after is up and good by Craig Ford. So no quit in that bunch. Driving it down the field. Suits. It's Jackson putting a bow tie on it. Thanks, Dari. Boy, what a job by Florida. You know, Dan Mullen, yeah. the guy yeah. just flat out wins. Finds a way to get the most out of his players. And wow, you're talking about back to back big wins for Florida. Well, we've talked a lot about how Ole Miss is wrapping up their non conference slate. Look at the numbers versus teams out of the SEC versus what they've done against Alabama and LSU, their two conference foes. You know, there is a happy medium somewhere in there. <laughs> Matt Luke's trying to find it. Absolutely. He's looking to find it, and hopefully next week they kind of get rid of some of those losses they have versus the SEC opponents and play similar to where they played today. And I know they're going to be excited when they watch this film, but as any coach does, there are going to be things that they can find out that they must work on as Coach Luke takes the time out here. Grant Ressmeyer in that quarterback now, trying to get everybody situated. A lot of guys who probably didn't come to the ballpark today thinking they were going to play. They got to find some mouthpiece, chin straps. <laughs> Don't forget, we have got a good one coming up on our SEC Saturday night contest presented by Holiday Inn Express. Second ranked Georgia hosting Vanderbilt. 7.30 Eastern time. Kick, but oh, 19 minutes away. Tom Hart, Jordan Rogers, Cole Kubelik on hand for that one. You look at our SEC standings. And LSU's going to hit their first blemish of the season, it appears. And Dave, everybody talks about how competitive the West is always, but the East is turning up to be really competitive right no now doubt. with Kentucky and Florida coming on here in the last few weeks. South Carolina getting a big win versus Missouri today. It's going to be interesting towards the latter part of this season and what happens in the East. If Georgia happens to slip up, there's Kentucky and Florida. Certainly, uh, certainly a little bit more balance yeah. this year uh, in these division races. I mean, basically the East was a, a war of attrition yeah. for a few years there. <laughs> Just Who holding on. It, right. <laughs> Wells with that carry stays in bounds. So Ole Miss will finish the day with a school record of total offense, a school record in the passing department, 
They have thrown for 517 yards. Matt Corral is number two quarterback, was 10 out of 10, 143. Jordan Ta'amu, who played just the first half, was 21 of 24, 374, three touchdowns. And all three of the NYO, NWO receivers, all over 100 yards receiving. Jordan Ta'amu with another outstanding game, slinging it around the field. Matt Luke gets the win he was looking for. And a confidence builder as the stretch gets much more difficult for Ole Miss. With six SEC teams on the slates. Boy. Lodge with 179 through the air receiving. A.J. Brown, 133. D.K. Metcalf with 115. All had a touchdown as well. Just a big day offensively. And for more, let's go down to Dawn. All right. Thank you. I'm here with Jordan Ta'amu, a new school record for total offense and passing yards for you guys. After a week full of talk about finding consistency, how big was this one for you guys? Uh, this one was big just for the offense and uh, for our team in general, just to stay consistent uh, throughout the game. And I believe we did that. And uh, we're super excited that we got the W. And um, I I'm just happy right now. Seven for seven, seven touchdowns for you in the first half, and two of those on the ground with your legs. How are you so effective there? Um, it's just what the defense gave us, um, the O-line blocking and our receivers doing our job and uh, staying downfield and blocking at the same time and uh, just getting that open grass area. I seen it, and I took it, and um, I just had to trust in my legs, and uh, that's what it gave us scoring, scoring drives. So. Your nasty wideouts were nasty again here today. What do you like the most about what you got out of them? Um, just the way they carry themselves, um, uh, the way they, they find the ball in the air, the way they can come down. Super happy with them, super happy with the twos that came out as well. Uh, they're nasty for a reason, and uh, they showed it tonight or today. Jordan, congratulations. Thank you so much. And how about that? Tom he remembered the handshake. I was more worried about Dawn than I was Jordan. <laughs> Jordan just, he played a whole game. He had a lot going on, but he still remembered his shake with Dawn. That's pretty cool. Great stuff. Good day for Ole Miss. They win this one in fine fashion, 70 to 21. That's our final score. Coming up next, it's SEC Now. Let's send it back to Dari in the studio.